I welcome all of you to this video. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. We are using all the information, all the tools we have available in our heads with regards to pre-calculus and calculus to make a respectable graph of what we see here, the function x natural log x. How can we graph it and not miss out on any of the key features which are involved in this function? When you're looking at this, it's made of two different functions. One function is x natural log x. You know it. You see it's a product of two different functions. What's the domain of x? It's going to be minus infinity to infinity. However, what's the domain of natural log x? It's zero to infinity. When you combine both of these into this product, x natural log x, this right here is what will constrain the domain. It will determine the domain. The domain of this right here will be zero to infinity, but we need to verify this value for sure. When we are talking about graphing it, we must then start worrying about the roots of this graph. When you're looking at this, your equation is f of x is equal to zero. You solve for x to determine your roots. That's how you will do it. I have two different entities, x is equal to zero, and natural log x is equal to zero and independently solve. You can't do much over here, so you're getting one root zero, but here you can, you can push the natural log on the other side. You have x is equal to e to the power of zero, which is giving you a one. These are giving you your x values of roots. You have a certain x value and that's what it is. Again, I haven't forgotten about this. There's a little bit of an issue involved here. We have to examine it to verify it indeed is good. When I put zero in the original function, what do you get? Well, you can get zero times natural log x. There's a bit of a problem. So I won't put anything over here. What's the problem? I'm doing zero times natural log of zero. Natural log of zero is technically not defined. So we'll leave this out. When I put one in here, what do I have? One times natural log of one, which is a zero. It's a zero. We're good. We'll start developing our graph over here. I know one root is one comma zero, and the other root could be right here. Maybe zero comma zero. We'll find out. But the part with regards to roots is done. We need to clarify this, we need to clarify this, and we will. The clarification procedure can come with us understanding the limit, limit as x approaches zero from right. Why do we have to do this clarification procedure? Because we have a natural log. You know the natural log is a one-sided limit at zero. You're always approaching zero from the right for natural log. If my function is x natural log x, what happens when we evaluate this limit? What happens to this function as you approach zero? It will bring us clarity with regards to this and with regards to this. When I put zero in places of x, what am I really getting? Zero and natural log of zero. When you think about the natural log graph, it looks something like this, one comma zero, and then here it is. As your values of x approach zero, your function is dipping towards minus infinity. So you're looking here at this zero comma minus infinity and indeterminate product type. You know indeterminate product types is zero comma infinity, but minus infinity equally applies, and this is an indeterminate product type. So we deal with it. How do we deal with it? We analyze it by means of the separation. I have a f function and a g function, and I'll convert this into quotient forms. I can do f divided by one over g, or I can do g divided by one over f. I would rather do this because it would be easy. Derivative with the numerator function, which we just natural log x divided by derivative of the denominator function, which will be the reciprocal. I'm looking at this reciprocal of x, one or x, and I'll apply this zero coming from the right. What's the derivative of natural log x, one or x? What's the derivative of one or x? It's minus one or x squared, and then zero from the right. You know when you shuffle these things around, you have one or x times minus x squared over one, zero from the right. This will cancel out with that. The only thing which remains is a minus x. You're putting zero from the right, and you're getting a zero. This limit, when you evaluate it, this function, x natural log x, indeed approaches zero. So you can say your end result here is zero. And it brings us clarity with this. We do have zero comma infinity. The only problem is, again, when you put zero here in this function, you have a natural log of zero, which is a problem. We do an open value. So our graph will have two roots. One is a closed value, one is an open value, or you can say an empty value. But it is still a value. Now what remains is the evaluation of extremes. Consider this as you're taking large values of x, like 50, 100, 1000, a million, and infinity, this product here will become a large, so you know you'll be increasing towards infinity eventually. Limit as x approaches infinity, this function here, the product of these two functions, will also approach infinity, so we know it's going to exceed out of bounds. But what about the extreme value? If you do the first order derivative, you can. You have to do the product rule. 
you'll do x times the derivative of natural log x, which is 1 over x plus natural log x times the derivative of x, which is just a 1. What do you get? You have 1 plus natural log x. That's your first order derivative. But to determine a critical point, you equal it to 0 and you solve for x. This is your formula. You equal it to 0 and you solve for x. 1 plus natural log x is equal to 0. Natural log x is equal to minus 1. x here is equal to e to the power of minus 1, which is equal to 1 over e. What is this giving you? Your critical point x value. My critical point has a certain x value which is 1 over e. I have to put this value right here and get my y value and I can. I'll have 1 over e times natural log of 1 over e. How can you evaluate this? Think of your laws of exponents and properties of natural logs which will be 1 over e times natural log of e to the power of minus 1. This can come right over here and hit with this. I'll have minus 1 over e natural log e. Natural log e is equal to 1. My y value is minus 1 over e. What does 1 over e minus 1 over e look like in terms of a calculator value? You can just do exponential and do the reciprocal. You're looking at 0.3678 comma minus 0.3678 critical point value. We can estimate it and it'll be right over here. 1 over e comma minus 1 over e. It's an extreme value, a critical point, but what type of extreme value is it? This is where the second order derivative test will come into play. We know by means of the natural log, there is no presence of this function here after and past the y-axis. Everything is going to be located only on the right of the y-axis. Second order derivative, what do we have? We just do the second order derivative of this or do the next order derivative of this. It will be 1 over x. And to classify, you put your critical point into your second order derivative and see what you get. My critical point x value is 1 over e. I'm putting it right here. 1 over 1 over e, which is equal to e. It's a positive. That's all I want. I'm looking if it's positive. If it's a positive, I'm dealing with a minimum, a local minimum or relative minimum. If it's a negative, I'm looking at a local maximum or relative maximum. It's a positive value, so I know I'm looking at a local minimum or relative minimum. However, when I connect these, I'm looking at a function which is coming like this. Why is it coming like this? Because I already alluded to at the very beginning, as I put larger values of this, as x becomes infinity, you have infinity times natural log infinity, you're, you will exceed out of bounds. You are looking at an increasing function. So that indeed is my graph. Now what is this? Is this a local minimum or relative minimum? Yes it is in the region of this area, but in the overall domain from 0 to infinity it's my absolute or global minimum. It is certainly a local and relative minimum in the region of that critical point, but in the overall domain it's your absolute or global minimum. Do we have to worry about an inflection point? No you don't, because you only see a single type of concavity. You see a concavity up. You don't see a change from concavity up to down or concavity down to up. So there will be no inflection point. But hypothetically, your inflection point would be determined as this and you solve for it. X would be here equal to zero. I have my second order data function. I have to make it equal to zero. X would be equal to one or zero. And you know this right here is problematic. It's telling you that this right here could be an inflection point. If supposedly there is some presence of the function on this side, it would be an inflection point, but it's not really a inflection point. So we don't worry about inflection points. We don't worry about concavities. But what is it that we can worry about? One more thing. We have a decreasing function over here. If you look at it, it's decreasing. Where is it decreasing from 0 up to 1 over e? Notice I'm using a circular parenthesis here. I'm not closing it out even though that value is part of the critical point. I'm taking it up to but not including because when I look at the increasing aspect of this function, then I'm keeping a circular parenthesis 1 over e and it's going up to infinity. I'm not closing these out with the square parentheses on either side because I'm reserving the exact value here for the critical point. Then we have a decreasing function up to that point. Then we have an increasing function from that point and you can understand the difference. But that right there is our graph in its entirety and it will be correct. It has a root here at 1 comma 0. It has what looks like a root at the origin but we know it to be an empty value because you cannot put 0 in place of here. Natural log 0 is not defined. We have a critical point. 1 or e comma minus 1 or e which is a local relative minimum in the neighborhood of that value but it is global and absolute minimum in the overall domain and our graph will be right you can verify it on your software it will be good but that's all we'll talk about for this function and it brings us to the end thank you for joining me have a good day